Uh, the Lord gives us a, a very strong word because as, as it says in the second reading that the word is like a sharpened sword that pierces even through body and soul. It pierces. It pierces. And it, this word should pierce your heart today because the point of the word of God, you know, when the word is proclaimed, we make it flesh in the assembly semi-assembly because you know with this social distancing and stuff like that we're kind of destroying a little bit the assembly but the lord you know makes he gives us this word for us to make a flesh that's why he he wants to pierce your heart today and jesus christ does it to, through the gospel the gospel is very clear I mean, I just need to, you know, to break it a little bit up for you guys or for us to eat today, to eat this word, for this to penetrate our being, because the most important thing is wisdom. Like the first reading says, you know, I treasure wisdom more than, more than riches and wealth, more than scepters and thrones, more than anything else. You know, this was the voice of Solomon, King Solomon, who is the one who wrote who wrote the book of wisdom and stuff like that you know and i say and then the, the psalm says you know the psalm says lord let me know the shortness of my life so that i, I may acquire wisdom of heart because when that when you're going if i tell you that you're going to die tomorrow what is your lexus for what is your your mercedes for i mean you know or your i don't know what what you treasure, treasure more. And this, with this, I, I kind of spice a little bit the entrance to the gospel. I want to go to the gospel because this man, there is a man, Jesus Christ finishes talking up to the Pharisees about marriage. You remember last week? Last week. So Jesus finished, finished talking about and then he starts going on a journey. He says he's going on a journey. Then a man comes and says, good teacher. First of all, he adulates him, praise him. He praises Jesus. Oh, good teacher. You know, praise. The fathers of the desert would say that to praise somebody is like acting like the devil. Because praise comes from the enemy, says the scripture. So, but Jesus Christ knows these things. And Jesus says, why do you call me good? Only God is good. You know, always Jesus Christ has the truth to tell to this man. But this is, this is just a, a little piece of information. Je the, the point is that the man asked Jesus how to reach the kingdom of God. And then Jesus starts naming the, the, the commandments. You know, the commandments. You shall not uh, kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not defraud. You shall not... You shall honor your father and your mother, etc., etc. But he misses. He misses some very important commandments. And he misses them because of an important point he wants to bring across to you and to me today. Because maybe you could say, oh, I fulfill all these commandments. And we can enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus leaves, leaves, out, leaves, he leaves out the two main commandments because he wants to to somehow to to put this point up into his heart because he wants he wants him to know what is the entrance truly the entrance to the kingdom of god is to love the lord your god with all your heart with all your mind and with all your soul and your neighbor as yourself so he left this one out because he says oh and then he says, the, the young man, sincerely, he says, I fulfilled this. I have fulfilled all these commandments. And we could say, we fulfilled the commandments. We could say, you know, I go to 6 a.m. Mass, or I don't know, I pray seven rosaries a day, or I don't know how many, how many things you do uh, to, to earn the kingdom of God here on earth. And then Jesus says, Jesus says today, he says, you guys lack one thing. You lack one thing, which is the other commandments that we're lacking. But in other words, so he says, you lack one thing. What is it? And then he says, go and sell what you have. 
and give to the poor. Get, go and sell what you have. And this, this should touch us all. Because nobody wants to talk about riches. Nobody wants to talk about goods. About the riches. Because when somebody touches my pocket, then I don't play anymore. When somebody touches my goods, I don't play anymore. All this life I have, I have built a whole empire. And when somebody touches my goods, I don't play anymore. And this, this, this word applies to all the statuses. You know, whether you're rich or poor. Because I know poor people that are very rich. And I know rich people that are very rich also. Because the richness comes from pride. Pride makes you rich. And also the attachment to goods, to possessions. Like your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. When, and one example of this is when somebody steals your car. Or somebody robs you something. Takes your Louis Vuitton bag and takes it away. Your heart goes with that bag. Because you have put your life in riches. That's why this man goes away sad. And the, the apostles, the disciples are shocked. They are shocked because they can't believe that this, this is happening. What is this guy talking about? And the disciples were not rich, but they know, they see the impossibility of it. The impossibility to give everything, to sell, go sell everything and give the money to the poor. And give to the poor. That's why today the gospel is very shocking. Because all of us are in this, in this state. We are very attached to riches. Very attached. And we put our life in riches. In things of this world. In affection. We put our life in affections. Into, to be loved in my girlfriend, my boyfriend. Or whatever. You're, you put your life on the other. That's why when you break up. When you break up with your boyfriend and girlfriend. This is for the young fellas. When you break up, it's like your life is finished. You even think about suicide. Because you have put your life in some other stuff. You have put your life in some other... The Lord is inviting us to put our life in Christ. This is the point of the gospel today. To put our life in Christ. Because once you put your life in Christ, the Lord will help you to be free. To be free. Because to be attached to riches is a slavery. It is a slavery. It's like a bird that has a little thread hanging on, on the bird. You know that the bird cannot fly. When, when, you, when you put a thread on a, on a bird, the, the bird cannot fly. If you put just a thread, it cannot fly. This is, this is our thread. And the Lord wants to untie this thread by giving us this word to penetrate ourselves. I know that today we're touching your pocket. And this is not to give, in the, to give money to the church or whatever. No, we need to make a treasure in heaven. We need to make a, What is a treasure in heaven? You do something, do something that will prove, that test yourself somehow in front of the kingdom of God to do a treasure in heaven. Do you have a treasure in heaven? What is a treasure in heaven, Father? Well, a treasure in heaven is go sell and go. Give to the poor. Let your, let your, and do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Do not say, oh, I give this window to the church. Therefore, let me put uh, Father Harold honoring Father Harold, Colorado. Prieto. Because if I miss my, my, my mother's last name, and she will be angry. All this is affection. So all this is attention. Do you understand what a treasure in heaven is? A treasure in heaven is something that only you and God knows. Only you and know. So Jesus Christ, many times in the Gospels, you can go anywhere. Jesus Christ says, make a treasure in heaven. Go make a treasure in heaven. So that nobody knows what you do. Nobody knows what you do with your riches. So that you demonstrate somehow that you want to enter into the life of Christ. That you want to do this. You want to do this because the Holy Spirit wants to do it for you. This is not our work. It's impossible for us to do. 
It is impossible. He says, the apostle says, it is impossible. And Jesus says, children, children, children. He says children because he knows that they need to be formed. Children, how hard it is to enter into the kingdom of God. How hard it is. But it's not, it's impossible for human beings, but it's not impossible for God. It is possible for God. That's why we come to Mass. Now we are enlightened with this word. Now we know that life does not depend on riches. Because Jesus Christ tells us to. And I'm not saying for this, but you, this as, an, as a spiritual guidance from the church, from the word of God, make a treasure in heaven. Make a treasure in heaven. It is important to do it. It is important to, to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. To listen what the Holy Spirit says to you through this word. What it says to you. The most important thing is when you do something. Let, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Not knowing. And this gospel comes to help us this Sunday. It's a shocking gospel, but the Lord wants to give us the kingdom of God, which is peace, freedom. The thread of the bird, you know, it makes us fly. It gives us the possibility to enjoy the world, to enjoy what we have. To have, to have possessions is not a problem. The problem is the thread. The problem is to love them. The problem is to put your life in the possessions. The problem is your relationship with the hundred dollar bills. Anyway, brothers and sisters, I hope the Lord help us with this. I don't know what I said, but the Lord will make us make it happen. The Lord will make it happen, and I know the Lord will help us. The Lord will help you in your, in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, in your personal relationship with God, to enter into the kingdom of God, and to, to be able to have a secret with the Lord. The, the thing is for us to have a secret with the Lord. We always want to show off. Beginning with me, huh? Beginning with me. We always want to show off. No, secrets with the Lord. Very important. I invite you to reread this gospel. Reread this gospel. It's, it's chapter 10, 17. Mark 10, 17. Reread it. It is important for you to enjoy this gospel on Sunday and to think about the treasure in heaven. Because I want you to enter into the kingdom of God. If I don't make it, you make it. You intercede for me. I want you to enter into the kingdom of God. Only for selfish reasons. So that you intercede for, for your family, for me. So you pray for me. May the Lord bless you all and give you the grace of the Holy Spirit to do impossible things to enter into the kingdom of God. Please stand.